piano. Shalonda Curtis Hackett says the call from a caseworker with New York City's Administration for Children's Services, or ACS, was a shock. She told me that someone called anonymously, telling them that the children were malnourished. The caseworker said she needed to come to the family's home to investigate. I explained, I don't know who you are. I don't know what I'm being, you know, accused of, and you're a stranger, so I'm not going to let you into my home. This is the height of COVID. Um, what did she say back? She said that if I didn't allow her into my home, I didn't consent, that she would come with the police. Curtis Hackett felt like she couldn't say no. During visits, she says a caseworker talked to her kids, looked at their beds, even opened their refrigerator. It felt like I couldn't protect my family. It felt like an invasion of our space, our privacy, just our home, and I couldn't necessarily say no. You felt like you didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. She was gonna come with the police and force me to do it or, or take my children. It's a system that disproportionately impacts families of color. More than 80% of children involved in investigations in New York City last year were black or Hispanic. As a black parent, you are ACS adjacent. Whether or not you've had an investigation, you know somebody. But I thought I did all the things right to not have it happen to me. When a report alleging abuse or neglect comes in, a caseworker is almost always sent to the home, no matter how serious the allegation. Child protective workers need a parent's permission to enter. In New York, if parents say no, the caseworker can then go to a judge for a court order and may request police assistance. But it rarely gets to that point. An NBC News and ProPublica investigation found of the more than 47,000 cases ACS was involved in last year, caseworkers obtained entry orders or orders to produce children just 208 times, less than 0.5% of cases. David Shalit Klein runs the Family Justice Law Center. He believes some of these interactions violate the Constitution's Fourth Amendment, which protects against unreasonable searches and seizures. ACS is saying that they are being let into the home through parents, through voluntary consent. But if entry to the home is obtained through coercion or under duress, um, that's not voluntary and that's illegal and unconstitutional. Did you ever feel like it was too invasive? Yeah, at times. This current ACS employee asked us to hide his identity and change his voice, fearing disciplinary action. How much pressure is there to get inside the house? There's all the pressure. It's like if you don't get inside the house, it's kind of seen as a failure in your part. He says managers often direct caseworkers under them to do whatever it takes to get in. If you're engaging with a family member who's resistant, you kind of have to make it real for them that there is a problem happening, not just for me as a caseworker, but also for you as a parent. And it will actually go faster if you comply with us. And that includes letting us into your home to do an assessment. That sounds a little coercive. It is. It's like, I would say, the velvet glove over the steel fist, so to speak. The implicit threat that, you know, should you not cooperate, then there's a list of more coercive things that ACS can do. Did you ever say to parents, I might have to call the police if you don't let me in? Oh, yes. I mean, and I've been directed to say that. A spokesperson for ACS says within 24 hours of a report, ACS is required to evaluate the safety of a child's home environment and make a determination of risk if the child remained in that home environment. And adds, ACS always seeks permission before entering a family's home. What's wrong with going into a home to make sure that a kid's not being abused? Conceptually, there's nothing wrong with it. It's that you need to follow proper procedures to make sure that it's justified and to make sure you're doing it in the least harmful way possible. Advocates are now pushing New York to pass so-called family Miranda legislation, requiring caseworkers to read parents their rights, just like the police do. Shalonda Curtis Hackett says ACS eventually determined her case was unfounded. It was very traumatic for my kids. They aged a little bit more than I wanted them to. Now, she educates other parents on their rights. Kate Snow, NBC News, New York. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.